Hello, this is Keith Schubert. I'm going to be demonstrating how to get a red rope from California Inland Empire Council. Uh, it's 14 knots in 60 seconds or less. So um, there's 14 basic knots of scouting. So run you through it. There's your first knot. And I'll explain these in detail later. Second knot. Third knot. Fourth. Fifth. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And 14, and that was 47 seconds by the uh, timer I had running there. So, um, not my best run, but not a bad run as we go through. Um, now, let me kind of break down what actually was happening there. I don't know how all this fit inside the video screen because I've got it sitting up there. I hope my hands are in view. We'll walk it through here. So, what we start off with this is a basic knot, this is our overhand. And it's really by itself not a really great knot, but it's a basis for a lot of other ones. Um, so then we go from there and we tie a square knot. All right, now you don't have to dress them. So you notice what I'm going through for speed. Dressing means you make it all nice and pretty and tightened up and things like that. So you notice I keep them loose and for a reason. Um, this is a square knot. Square knot is also called a reef knot. In scouting it's called the joining knot because you have to tie it when you join scouting. It's good for attaching two ropes of the same size. Um, if I take it out from the, here and just stick it right through the side, I've converted that knot into a sheet bend, which is good for two ropes of different size. Now this is actually one rope. This is my red rope itself that I earned by doing this. But it's a very small addition. Now notice, don't, don't tighten it down like I just did. So right from overhand to square, and then right through the side and then we pull it out so that was three knots and you twist it again and you have a double overhand now again double overhand isn't the greatest but it leads into a surgeon's knot which if you were to tighten it down and pull it um, it actually is good it's used theoretically by surgeons in surgery I don't know if they still do but they used to because when it did tighten up it was not going anywhere it was a really good knot for covering stuff um, that's even hard for me to kind of undo it there since I tightened it down so hard. Now we get into uh, some of the funnier knots that are in here. Now these are families. If you notice that group that I went through, there's a sequence of five of them that are there. If you don't use the families, you'll never complete in time. So we do overhand, square, sheet bend, which was actually used to tie sheets or sails, and then a double and then surgeons. That's five knots, one family. Now we get into ones that use loops. So the first one we want to get is a sheep shank. So if you make three loops, if you notice I made a loop, twisted, and then I tuck them in behind each other. And I reach through the outer two loops and grab and pull. Now if I were to dress this knot, I just pull tight, yeah, sheep shank. And it's nice, strong, good knot. Um, as long as you aren't using nylon. Um, nylon slips a little too much. And some people might go, well, that doesn't look exactly like it. And I still haven't perfectly prettied it all up. If I twisted it around a little bit, you might recognize it better. It's good for isolating a central rope. Because when these get tightened, it doesn't require anything special there. And it will hold it and tie it off. So you can isolate loops if there's a frayed portion and stuff like that. Uh, but notice how it kind of bends up. Uh, you'd be better off actually doing an alpine butterfly in real life, uh, sometimes called a butterfly knot. But in our case, so this is the quick way to tie it. You make three loops. Once you pull it to here, it's clear you knew what you were doing. So we stop at that point because you don't have to dress it. I just stick my finger through. Now this is a clove hitch. Right, so this is where it kind of gets a little fun. All right, so if you... Notice on here, that's a clove hitch. 
Now clove hitches are useful for a lot of different things that are going on. Um, they're useful for um, doing like tying a rope to a thing. We often use it for starting a variety of, of other knots that, that go on. If I'm going to do like a lashing or something and, and things of that sort. So it's a good kind of general starter knot for a bunch of other things. Um, so that's a, a clove hitch as it goes. And notice it's just that same double loop pattern. Now, if I had taken that and instead of my finger, which was representing a stick, I had put in a rope, that would have been two half hitches. This illustrates a lot of knots actually follow very similar type of, um, you know, kind of a, a pattern and thing. So I, I just got two knots for the price of one, and it's a very easy way of, of getting a variety of different knots in one fell swoop. So that's a, a quick, easy, nice one that goes on. And we take advantage of these for our thing. These are what we call the knot families as we go on. So that's our next one as it goes. Now, all it has to do is pull one off the end, and I got a single half hitch. Now, again, I, I mentioned it's kind of hard to necessarily see them because I'm, I'm doing them very loose. If I were to pull this up and have it tied on, most people would readily recognize that as a half hitch. Right? But it doesn't make a difference that this is long. It's still the same knot. It just hasn't been tightened up. So it gives us a nice coverage of, of what we need for those. So that's our, our basic runs on there. Now we have to get our next one as we go in. Now this one is a particularly fun knot for doing things like, um, you know, tents and, and things like that. We call it a taut line hitch. If you take this one and you keep wrapping in the same direction, two under, wrap around the top, one out. Now, in order to make this one useful, again, I just tied it quickly. It's that same wrap. You notice I always kept the same direction when I was spinning it. Keep the center so it can slide. Then you'd have to tighten this down to really get an effective taut line. But the fun part about the taut line is once you've got it tightened up, it'll be able to slide until, let me try to get this so that I can fit in the screen till I pull on it and you can notice I'm pulling pretty hard there um, and it won't slide but then watch just easy as pie it moves so a taut line hitch is really nice that's why it's useful for tents and all kinds of things of that sort because it's actually pretty good now that's the fifth knot in this family so again watch and this is the kind of doing a loop family. So notice I do the same loop pattern every single time. You make three, get your sheep shank. All right. We don't actually pull it tight, but you just do enough to show that you've got it. Drop the outer one, stick your finger through. That'd be a clove hitch. Stick the rope through in its place. That's two half hitches. Drop the top one, it's one half hitch, and then just wrap around second time below, and one more time above, and you got a top line. Now that I've got through those, that's five more, so I've now done ten. And they're actually really fast. Usually by this point, I'm only about 20, you know, maybe 30 seconds tops in, and I'm already through ten of my knots. Now I just have to tie a couple last ones. This is a running knot or a slip knot. Now, it's kind of useful in some areas. and in, in one direction, it's tied. The other end, it's not. But if I take this end that has the knot on, you'll notice one end slides. The other end doesn't. If you take the one that doesn't and you put its end through and grab it back around. So notice there's my slip. I just stuck it through and grabbed. And then I pull on the end that slides. And I just let it 
pop over that little bend I made. What you'll end up with is the world's smallest bowline right there, and that's a bowline. Now, there's a lot of ways you can tie bowlines. There's three common ones that are used in scouting, and this is one of them. That's a pretty nice area. Now, if you notice, I use a tiny bit of the end because a bowline is a pain in the rear to get out, so I don't. I, I've got two more knots tied for my 10, 11 for the running, 12 for my bowline. I just move down the line. And I tie an 8 knot. 13. And I come down. I got a lot of rope left. I just grab and I twist a whole bunch. Got a little loop here. Grab the other end of the rope through and pull. And that's called a timber hitch. And if you pull, it's really tight. It will hold on. It's used for dragging lumber and timber and things of that sort. But if I loosen off, it comes undone very easily. You have to have at least two twists. But you can have as many as you want. So if you know, I just crank it around. I don't even bother to count. It doesn't take me very long to crank it a whole bunch. And then I just shove the rope loose end through. And I've never had to undo the two that were really a pain to undo. Actually, this one's a pain to undo too, but I've got 14, so I'm done. So in that case, it took me 47 seconds. Um, you know, on a good day, I'm in the 30s, but it's not too tough. I mean, once you're under a minute, you know, actually at that point, I really don't care that much. Um, it's just kind of fun, but uh, this is how to tie the basic 14 knots of scouting in, in under a minute, and I hope that has helped you all, and I will uh, catch you on the flip side. Have a good day. Bye.